Mga kapatid sa pananampalataya, nais ko kayong imbitahan na makinig, sumubaybay at seryosohin ang ating Bea Sunday School every 9.30 in the morning sa ating Bea Facebook page at YouTube channel. Mahalaga na mapakinggan ang mga napapanahong lessons na iatid sa inyo ni Dean Ramsey, Colorado, ang ating Bea Sunday School teacher. Si Dean Ramsey ay isang dating professor at dean ng University of Cordilleras. Siya ay Sunday School teacher ng Baguio City First UMC sa maraming taon na. Gamit natin ang NIV Standard Lesson Commentary na gawa sa Amerika pero inilalagay sa tamang konteksto ng ating Sunday School teacher. Pinag-aaralan ng mga Kristiyanong theologians at dumaan sa masusing paghahanda. Libre naming ibabahagi sa inyo ang mga lessons. Maaari ninyong i-download at gamitin sa inyong mga lokal na simbahan para pag-aralan at ibahagi rin sa iba. Sama-sama tayong mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos para sa Kanyang kapurihan at ikakalwalhati. Pagpalain po kayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School. July 2, 2023, lesson number 5 of the fourth quarter. The title of our lesson, Peace to the Nations. Background scripture is from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9. The Sunday School material that we are using is Standard Lesson Commentary, 2022-2023. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be studying the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 9. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us. We pray that you will help us understand your message for us through this prophecy of Zechariah. Help us, Lord, in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so year at a glance, the one-year curriculum, fiscal year 2022-2023, these were our lessons, first quarter for September 2022, God's exceptional choice. Second quarter, that is December, January, February, from darkness to light. Third quarter, March, April, May of 2023, Jesus calls us. Today, we are in the fourth quarter, covering the months of June, July, and August, the righteous reign of God. And in this quarter, we look at scriptures from the books of Isaiah, Ezekiel, Sephaniah, Sikariah, Matthew, Galatians, Romans, and 1 Corinthians. The fourth quarter is divided into three units. The prophets proclaim God's power, unit number one. And we are in the last lesson for unit number one. The fifth lesson for unit one, peace to the nations. Unit number two, which will start next Sunday, Jesus envisions the kingdom. And in unit two, we will be looking at scriptures from the Gospel of Matthew. And then Unit 3, for the month of August, the theme, God's Eternal Reign. And the lessons will be from Galatians, Romans, 1 Corinthians. So in Unit 1, the prophets proclaim God's power. Here, Isaiah described the kingdom as a time in the future. When the Lord will establish His rule over a new heaven and a new earth, ito yung prediction, prophecy na Isaiah, yung bagong heaven, bagong earth, na mangyayari sa hinaharap. At doon, there will be no sorrow, there will be no need, lahat ng kailangan ay naandon. And there will be harmony. It is where the wolf and the lamb will feed together. So, 
as our pattern, we read first through the scripture. Babasahin natin sa Tagalog, sa English, at sa Tagalog or sa Pilipino. Sikariah chapter 9, The Coming of Zion's King. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I will bend Judah as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your son's science against your son's Greece and make you like a warrior's sword. Then we jump to verse 16. The Lord their God will save his people on that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. How attractive and beautiful they will be. Grain will make the young men thrive and new, and new wine the young women. Sa Tagalog, ang magiging hari ng Sion. Sion, magalak ka at magdiwang. Umawit ka ng malakas, O Jerusalem. Pagkat ang hari mo ay dumarating na, magpakumbaba, mapagpakumbaba. Mag, ma, mapagwagi at mapagtagumpay. Mapagpakumbaba siya at nakasakay sa isang bisirong asno. Sinabi pa ni Yahweh, ipaalis niya ang mga karwahe sa Ephraim, gayon din ang mga kabayong pandigma sa Jerusalem. Babaliin niya ang mga panudla ng mandirigma at paiiralin ang pagkakasundo ng lahat ng bansa. Ang hangganan ng kaharian niya ay dagat magkabila mula sa Yoprates hanggang dulo ng Daigdi. Sinabi pa ni Yahweh, alang-alang sa ating tipan na pinagtibay ng dugo, ibabalik ko ang mga anak mong itinapon ko sa malayo. Kayo, mga bilanggo na di nawalan ng pag-asa, ay makababalik na sa inyong dupain. At ang magandang kalagayan ninyo nung una ay aking pag-iibayuhin. Ang Huda ay gagawin kong pana, ang Ephraim naman ang siyang palaso. Kayong mga tagasyon ay gigisingin ko laban sa mga taga-Grisya. Gagawin ko kayong tabak ng mga kawal na matitipuno. Sa araw na iyon, ililigtas sila ni Yahweh pagka sila ay kanyang kawan. Magniningning sila sa buong lupain, parang batong hiyas ng isang korona. Kaganda at kagasaganaan ay sasa kanila. Sagana ang pagkaing magbibigay lakas sa mga binata at dalaga. The key verse is Sikariah 9.16 The Lord their God will save His people on that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in His land like jewels in a crown. Yan. So, ano ang dapat nating matutunan? Number one, identify the biblical fulfillment of Sikariah's prophecy. Yan. Alamin natin yung mga prophecy ni, ni Sakaraya na naganap na, na-fulfill, naganap, nangyari na. Ano-ano yung mga yon yung mga prophecy ni Sakaraya na nangyari na. Explain the significance of that fulfillment. Ano kaya ang kahalagahan nitong nangyari na nga ang mga prophecy ni Sakaraya sa ating buhay? State the reason why that fulfillment should make a difference in his or her life. Bakit ito ay mahalaga para sa ating mga personal na buhay? Yung ang kaganapan ng mga prophecy ni, ni, ni Sikaraya. 
Papano ito uh, makakatulong sa ating pananampalataya? Lesson outline, so meron tayong introduction, extreme preparations, then the lesson context, Sikariah the prophet, another lesson context, Sikariah as prophecy. Then we have the scripture there, the Lord's king, the Lord's kingdom, the Lord's care. Conclusion, play money versus real money. Okay, so extreme preparations. Ex- question mark. Extreme preparations. Yung, ito yung kwento. Kung mayroon tayong darating na bisita, kung may darating na bisita, maybe an overnight guest, mag stay sila sa gabi. Anong klaseng paghahanda ang ating gagawin? How to prepare? Ang tanong dyan eh, depende sa kung sino yung magiging bisita. Yan. Who, what is the status of the visitor? Yan. Kapag ka medyo mataas ang status ng, ng bisita, then what will be the preparation? It's a extreme preparation. Talagang naglilinis. Yung isang kwarto na ibibigay, natutulugan nila ay, ang tawag nila ay, it will be thoroughly clean, windows washed, Bedspreads, laundered, carpet, steam. Yan, yan ang mga paghahanda. Ngayon, eh kung uh, palagi na may go-overnight, maaaring isang kamag-anak mag-overnight, yung kaibigan ng uh, anak ay mag-overnight, maaaring simple lang ang preparation. Maaaring tama na yung sofa. Lagyan na lang ng cover, unan, okay na yun. Di ba? A brief description of what was to be done to prepare for the arrival of the ultimate dignitary, the Lord God. Eh, papaano ito? Itong prophecy na Isaiah 43.4, sinulat nung 750 B.C. before Christ. At ang darating ay, gaano ba ka, ka, ano ang status ng darating? An ultimate dignitary, the Lord God is coming. In flesh. So, ano ang paghahanda na dapat gawin? Isaiah 40. Ito yung prophecy ng Isaiah 40. A voice of one coming, calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert of highway for our God. Everybody shall be raised up. Etc. Ito ay binumabanggit kay John the Baptist. Pass forward tayo sa New Testament. Take note. Ito ay isinulat ni Isaiah at si Isaiah, the prophetic period of Isaiah is somewhere in 750 B.C. to 715 B.C. This passage is cited in the New Testament as being fulfilled in the ministry of John the Baptist. All this leads to the conclusion that the preparation was to be spiritual in nature. Yung preparation ay spiritual, hindi lang isang physical na paghanda. Ano ano ba yung ano ba yung mensahe? Ano ba yung mensahe na sinasabi nitong si John the Baptist? Repentance. Paghanda espiritual na paghanda. Darating na ang Panginoon. Kayo ay repent of your sins, from your sins. Yan. Sincere repentance. Ito dapat ano yung mga reaction doon sa mga mga sinasabi ni John the Baptist. Number one, sincere repentance. Ano kaya ibig sabihin ng sincere repentance? Luke 3, 7, Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Dapat mayroong prueba. Totoo ang repentance. Sabi ng mga kausap, paano? Paano gagawin yan? Pinagpatuloy ni, ni John the Baptist ano ibig sabihin ng the fruit of repentance. Sabi niya, With anybody who has two shirts, share one who have none. Eh, dalawang shirt mo. Bigay mo na yung isa doon sa walang shirt. Yung mga tax collectors, sabi niya, don't collect more than what is required. And so on. Yung mga sundalo, huwag kayong kurap. That is a sincere repentance. Kung totoo na nagre-repent ka din, ipakita mo how. Produce fruit of repentance. Ito naman, yung isang 
extreme reaction doon kay John the Baptist. Ha? Sabi doon sa Matthew 11, For John came, neither eating, and they say, He has a demon. You see, yun yung others, they try to discredit John. Eh, ito, hindi kumakain ng maayos ito. Kung ano-ano lang ang kinakain. Hindi siya umiinom ng ala, etc. He has a demon. Dinidiscredit. So ito yung mga reaction doon sa mga sinasabi ni John. Only those at the proper extreme heart preparation were able to recognize a prophetic fulfillment when it happened right before their eyes. So ito yung prophecy. Prophecy, prinopisa ito ni Isaiah some 700 years, more than 700 years ago. And again, it was also prophesied by uh, Sikariah more than 500 years ago before it happened. Okay, so, lesson context, Sikariah the prophet. Sino ba itong si Sikariah? Sino? So, yung first verse niya, sino, in-identify siya kung sino ang lineage niya, sino ang tatay niya, etc. The prophetic period of Sikariah is an, somewhere in 520 to 486 BC. Doon, doon niya, doon niya, doon niya binanggit itong kanyang prophecy. Dahil doon yung prophetic period. More than 500 years before the fulfillment of that prophecy. Ka, ito yung contemporary ni, ni Sikariah, si Haggai, Prophet Haggai. So, they, at silang dalawa, they have a, a role, a leadership role in the building of the second temple. Mangyari 486, nung bumalik na, nung bumalik na yung mga exile doon sa Babylon, bumalik na sila doon sa Jerusalem, eh, kasama itong si Sikaraya doon sa bumalik at sila yung nangunguna doon sa rebuilding of the second temple. Mangyari, nawasak yun eh. Winasak yun ni King Nebuchadnezzar. Both Sikaraya and Haggai lived during the time of King Darius of Persia. Yan. So, yan yung mga reference dates kung paano na-identify na dyan na buhay itong si Prope, yung prophetic period ni Sikaraya. Mangyari doon sila sa panahon ni King Darius III. The longest... Oh, ito. How about Sikaraya as prophecy? Sikaraya as prophecy. So, yung book of Sikaraya as prophecy. So, sabi dyan, this is a... Uh, isa yan dun sa mga 12 minor prophets. There are 18... Prophets, books of prophets, five major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Daniel. Yun yung mga first five, uh, first five of the books of prophets, major prophets. Yung next twelve ay, ang tawag doon ay minor prophets. Bakit minor prophets? Maiksi lang. But, this, uh, the, 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 the book, Sekaraya is the longest of the of the uh, 12 minor prophets don pinakmahaba daw it is equivalent to 22% of the of the whole 12 minor prophets and yung Sekaraya the book of Sekaraya is divided into three major parts yan yung first part from chapter 1 to chapter 6 it features eight night visions Mayroong mga visions at ang format ay apokaliptik. Ibig sabihin ay future events. Visions of future events. So ito yung mga 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 visions. The man among the myrtle trees, a man with a measuring line, clean garments for the high priest, the gold lampstand, the olive trees, the flying scroll, the woman in a basket, four chariots, a crown for Joshua. So ito yung mga mga visions. Yan. So, na first part ng ng uh, the book of Zechariah. The second part is chapter 7 and chapter 8. These are responses by the Lord to observances of fasting that were asked by a delegation of, from the Bethel. 
So tinatanong ngayon, ano ba ang dapat na gawin? Nung mangyari, itutuloy ba namin yung ginagawa naming nakaugalian na fasting doon sa Babylon? Ngayon na nandito na kami at bumalik na sa Jerusalem. Yan. Yung, uh, ito yung 7 and 8. Oh, the fasting is inherent in the praise, deny yourself. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng fasting. Eh. Deny yourself. But, while the Jews were in Babylon, they had introduced more fast into the calendar. Yun, na, mayroon silang mga idinagdag na mga fasting. At, si Karaya, yung second part, warned that all religious ceremonies, mga fasting, however proper, were meaningless unless people's lives were controlled by God. Kahit na gaano tama yung, yung procedure dito sa mga rituals, pati yung mga fasting tama, ang sabi ni Sikaraya, winawa ni, kung, kung hindi naman kalugod-lugod sa Diyos ang inyong puso, ang inyong tunay na pagkatao, ang inyong damdamin, ang inyong action, ang puso, kung hindi naman ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos, lahat ng mga ceremonies na to ay meaningless. That is the chapter 7 and chapter 8. So, yung third part where we are, yung chapter 9. Take note that the uh, chapter 9, itong ating lesson ay nasa chapter 9, starting verse 9. So, yung, yung third part of the of the book of Zechariah is tungkol sa mga dalawang undated prophecies. Yan, chapter 9 to chapter 11, kasama rito yung pinag-aaralan natin. It speaks of God's forthcoming action of judgment and mercy. Yan, yun ang prophecy. Nakapalob ito sa verse, uh, chapter 9 and chapter 11. Uh, judgment. Prophecy, judgment of the people of Israel. And, and kat, nap, naparosahan na sila. And then God came back and had mercy on them. Pina, pi, pinatawad sila at ibinalik na sila sa kanilang lupa, the promised land. Today's lesson is part of this prophecy. Yung, yung second part nitong nung Second portion of third part is chapter 12 to 14 describes a coming uh, day of the Lord. Okay. So, as Sikaraya 9 begins, the first eight verses are believed to focus on the best during time of the Mangyari yung lesson natin ay nag sa verse 9. So, yung first verses from verse 1 to 8 ay tungkol daw ito kay Alexander the Great. Pinaliliwanag dito. At kailan ba nabuhay si Alexander the Great? 356 to 323 B.C. Saan? Mang, ito, ito yung nangyari sa yung pro- prophecy ni, ni Sekaraya tungkol sa pangyayari dito sa uh, buhay ni Alexander the Great which is around 200 years af- from the time of the prophecy of Sekaraya. 500 300, di ba? Around 200 years. At tinalo nga nitong si Alexander the Great yung Persian army. Darius III. Saan niya tinalo? Yan, at the Battle of Issus in 333 BC. Tinalo. So, from, from Persia, from Babylon, naging Persia, at ngayon ay Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great is a Greek. Alexander's Greek army Nung nanalo na ang si Alexander the Great, ay hindi niya nilusob ang Jerusalem, pinabayaan niya ang Jerusalem. Instead, pumunta siya at nilusob niya ang Egypt. Ano ang significance nito? Sabi dyan, God bless and condemn empires and kings throughout. E, lahat ng nangyayari ay uh, kakontrolado ng Diyos. Lahat ay patungo sa plano ng Diyos. At itong hindi paglusob ng, ni Alexander the Great sa Jerusalem, instead pumunta siya sa Egypt at yan ang nilusob niya, is, is in accordance with the plan of God. So lahat, maging yung hari, maging yung mga empire, lahat, 
they perform a role in God's plan. And that God's plan ultimately bring the Messiah into the world at just the right time in history. So yun yung sinasabi ng ating commentator na itong pangyayaring ito ay may kinalaman sa darating sa, sa plano ng Diyos. And the, the plan of God is that the Messiah will come and that it will come at the right time. Sinulat yan doon sa Galatians, kasulat, But when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law. Alexander's conquests are considered very important for they fulfilled what God intended. So, mula doon sa panahon ni Alexander the Great, hanggang sa naganap itong prophecy nito ay 300 years. 300 years. Yung verse 8 to 9, na naganap itong verse 8 to 9, 300 years. But take note, yung, yung prophecy ni Sikaraya hanggang maganap ito, ay it is 500 years. 500 years. Isaiah's prophetic period, 750. Ito si Sikaraya, yung prophetic period niya, 520, etc. Eh, siyempre, kailan ba dumating si, si Jesus? Siyempre, first century AD. Ang tawag ng mga scholars, ng mga estudyante ng Bible, ito ay prophetic foreshortening. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? What appears at first glance to be prophecies that are to be fulfilled closely together in time turn out to be separated by centuries. Kala na lang mangyayari na sa madaling panahon. Pero, hundreds of years bago naganap. Another example of this prophetic foreshortening. Doon sa Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, prophecy ni 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 Isaiah tungkol kay Jesus nung siya ay mag-uumpisa na at itong itong prophecy na ito ay binanggit ni Jesus doon sa synagogue sa Nazareth yan that is around more than 700 years ang tawag niya ay isang pulito ng prophetic shortening eh, ano ba ito ano ba ito na sinasabi natin when Jesus was ready to announce himself and his mission He began with a ma- dramatic quotation of his passage. Sinasabi na ni Jesus, Ako yung binabanggit ng mga prophets. Yan, tingnan natin. Ito yung Isaiah 61 and Luke 41. At nag- binabasa, siyang pinagbasa nila nung scroll ni Isaiah. And this is what is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He's anointed me, etc., etc. At at uh, binang at doon sa dulo pagkatapos niyang basahin ito sabi ni Jesus today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing ang sinasabi ni Jesus yung sinasabi ng mga propeta na darating na misaya at magpapagaling at magliligtas ako yun yan ang sabi ni Jesus now let's go to the scripture Verse 9a, Rejoice! The Lord's King, rejoicing, commanded. Yeah. The Lord's King, rejoice! Greatly, daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem, see your King comes to you. Anong? Eh, ang paliwanag dito, this is a Hebrew poetry called parallelism. Parallel, parallelism. Meaning, use of synonymous words. Katulad ng rejoice, shout, daughter, rejoice, shout. Eh, pareho yan. It implies a celebration. It is a parallelism. Another term that is the same. Diba? Daughter, daughter Zion, daughter Jerusalem. They are the same. They are parallel. The arrival of this king in an occasion of is an occasion of rejoicing. Verse 9b, righteous and victorious. So, yung darating na hari ay, he is righteous, meaning, he is just. He is a king who will rule 
for the benefit of the people. At yan ay siya ay para sa mga tao. Kung ano ang pakapakanan ng mga tao. In the latter part of our study, he is called the shepherd, the good shepherd. That is, the, those are the, the role, the, the responsibility of the, the shepherd, the dito just king. He is going to do what is best for them. And then they describe how he will come lowly and riding on a donkey on a colt, the fall of a donkey. You see, this happened, this prophecy of Zechariah written somewhere in 500 BC. More than 500 years later, it happened. Indeed, the king, Jesus Christ, entered, but he is riding on a colt. Normally, kapag kang hari ay darating, and normally, arrogant in wielding power, napakayayabang na mga hari. They will be riding in a white horse or maybe in a chariot. Pero itong sinasabing hari na to, he is the exact opposite. He is riding on a fall of a donkey. So, yan yung katauhan ng haring ito. Those are the trait of lowliness. Lowliness. Humility. Being humble. At yan ang naging buhay ni Jesus dito sa lupa. And he was entering his city, his temple, in the same ordinary way. Lahat ng mga tao na ordinary, pumapasok sila doon sa, sa city of Jerusalem, hindi sila nakasakay sa mga magagarang mga kabayo. They raid on a donkey. And the owner of the city, the owner of the temple, he is entering on the same ordinary way, on a donkey. And each of the four Gospels tells the fulfillment of this predicted event. Nangyari ito. Isinulat ito ng apat na Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Doon sa Matthew 21.4, sabi yan, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Yan, naka, naka-emphasize. Ito rin ang, doon kay John. Ito ay nangyari, as it is written. It, is, it emphasizes that a prophecy prophesied more than 700 years by Isaiah, more than 500 years by Zechariah, now is happening. Or it happened on Palm Sunday. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nation. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Yeah. So, tingnan natin yung mga terms na ginabi dito. Ephraim pertains to the, the northern tribes, the ten tribes of Uh, sometimes it's called the kingdom of Israel, uh, kingdom of Ephraim. Yung, yung southern tribes, the kingdom Judah, Jerusalem. So therefore, the intention is that the entire Israel is included in the promise. Hindi lamang yung, hindi lamang yung Judah na naandun ngayon sa Babylon, but it, the promise of mercy is also given to the northern kingdom the, the, the northern kingdom that were exiled earlier by the Assyrians the peace that the coming would bring would not, would not be only for Israel but for everyone yeah. so dito yung peace na pinapangako nitong duma no itong haring na ito ay hindi lamang pinapangako sa Israel. It is to everyone. Yan, to the ends of the earth, lahat kasali na. Lahat kasali na. It is the peace of reconciliation between God and people. Lahat kasali doon sa reconciliation na gagawin ng Diyos sa kanyang mga nilalang lahat. Yung He, He dito, yan, It refers to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
Jesus is coming and he is reconciling man and God and the reconciliation, the offer of reconciliation, the offer, the act of mercy is for all. From, from sea to sea, from river to the end of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of the covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Yeah. So, blood of the covenant. So, tinatanong dyan, ito bang, blood of the covenant is the praise, blood of the covenant, looking to the past, mangyari ginamit itong blood of the covenant, doon sa Exodus 24.8, or to the future, which is Matthew 26.20. Ito ba ay tungkol doon sa mga animals o na pinapatay noong panahon ni Moses o ito ay tungkol kay Jesus na binigay ang kanyang buhay para sa tao. At ang sagot, the context implies that the redemptive work of the Messiah is in view. Yun. Eh, sabi rito, mangyari para sa lahat na, para sa lahat, from all from sea to sea, from to the end of the earth, lahat na. So therefore, in context, it is the redemptive work of Jesus. Basahin lang natin yan, Exodus. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant. That was the covenant in, in the Old Testament, the covenant. And it is affirmed by the blood of the uh, animal. Moses is took the blood, is sprinkled on the people. Parang yun ang katibayan ng covenant between God and man. What is the covenant? That God will be their God and man is going to be there. Uh, they will promise allegiance and loyalty to God. God will protect them. The people will be faithful and only God will be their God. That is the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But take note the difference. Kaya ng new covenant, there is the, in the New Testament, it is no longer blood of an animal, but it is the life of the Lord Jesus Christ that was given and poured for forgiveness of sin. The New Testament applies the very presology from this solemn ceremony to the new covenant made possible by Christ sacrifice. Waterless pit na. No, again, bin, binanggit ito. Uh, the picture here is, it is a hopeless situation. This waterless pit. I will free your prisoners from waterless pit. It, it pertains to the picture nung itong si Jeremiah nagpo-prophesize siya, nagalit yung hari sa kanya. Anong ginawa kay Jeremiah? Ipinatapon siya sa cistern. Isang malaking uh, tanke, uh, parang batya, pero walang tubig, instead putik. Baka hanggang dibdib ang putik. Nilagay siya ron. Wala ng pag-asa. Hopeless situation. Of course, alam natin yung istorya. Somebody Uh, save Jeremiah from there. But Jeremiah on his own cannot save himself. So ganyan din yung picture na to. The, the shedding of the blood, uh, Jesus' blood gave hope to the hopeless. Ganun din. Everyone is like in a hopeless situation and only through the Lord Jesus Christ, can they be saved? A double reference may be intended. Yan. A double reference daw. Sinasabi niya. Why? Because it may pertain to the physical release from Babylonian captivity. But take note, doon sa New Testament, it is a spiritual freedom. Yun ang mensahe ni John the Baptist. Repent. It is a spiritual uh, a sickness that must be cured. They have to repent. A spiritual freedom that was to be brought by the, by the Messiah. Verse 12, Return to your fortress, you prisoners of 
you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Ayan. Fortress. This fortress refers to Jerusalem. Bumalik na kayo doon sa Jerusalem. Now take note, at this time, at this time of prophecy, Jerusalem's wall had not yet been rebuilt. Bagsak pa. So anong klaseng fortress ito? Wala namang napakadaling pumasok ng mga kaaway. Therefore, Therefore, para magkaroon ng safety, it has to be it has to be because God is there. Any safety have to come from God personally at that point in time. Why? There is no wall to protect them. The image indicates that when one returns to God, he will give more than what was expected. Yun yung image three. Kapag magbabalik loob sa Diyos, ay naandun ang blessings from God. If man is going to turn their face from God, lahat ng kahirapan, lahat ng parusa, they were exiled to Babylon because of their sin, because of their unfaithfulness, because they turned their face from God and they worship idols. So, kung magbabalik loob, ano ang mangyayari? Yan ang pangako. The ancient Israels had received a double portion of God's wrath. <laughs> Doble ang pahirap sa kanila. Mangyayari, katakot-takot na lahat na ng miracles. They had been, they ate manna for 40 years in wilderness and still they don't put their trust in God. Pero, but if they will return, they will also experience double portion of God's blessing. Twice as much to you, you see? Twice as much to you. Verse 13, I will bend Judah as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your sons, Zion, against your sons, Greece, and make you like a warrior. Yeah. Sabi dyan, this number one, against your sons, Greece, Yeah, sabi niya, eh, mukhang lalabanan nila yung Greece. It reverses the problem noted in Joel 3.6. Mangyari, doon sa 3.6, sabi, you sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to Greeks. Ha, binibenta yung mga tao sa Greeks. That you might send them far from their homeland. Ngayon ay, handa na sila. Lalaban na sila. Although the arrival of the Messiah is 500 years beyond the time of Zechariah's prophecy, God promises to rescue His people during that interval. Hindi pa nangyayari. Wala pa yung Messiah. Pero pa maraming mga nangyayari dito sa pagitan from the prophecy hanggang sa panahon ng Messiah. Pero the interval, paruloy pa rin na binabalik sila ng Diyos. Binabalik sila ng Diyos. Okay, let's see again the timeline. So, si Alexander the Great, 323 BC, nung namatay siya, yung kanyang empire ay divided into, into four, to his four generals. Yan. Tapos, may mga Maccabian revolt. Maccabian revolt. May mga Maccabian revolt. And in 152, Jews regained autonomy. Wow! Na-regained ng Jews ang kanilang autonomy. Ha? talagang sila ay nanindigan muli as Jews. Pero, in 63 BC, nasakop ulit sila ng Roman Empire. Verse 16, The Lord their God will save His people on that day as a shepherd saved His flock. Yan. So, from military action to a familiar, familiar picture of carrying flock of sheep. Bigla-bigla, nawala na yung picture ng military. This time, it is now a picture of a shepherd. Yan. The shepherd caring for his flock. God's care had seemed distant or non-existent during Babylonian. Yun. Nung nasa exile sila sa Babylon, parang wala ang Diyos sa kanila. Parang God is not caring for them. But take note, they were being punished for their idolatrous Uh, acts. But the prophet 
expressed confident trust that such an outlook was to be temporary. Temporary lang yan. Mas importante yung spiritual uh, healing. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. Ito magiging picture ng Israel. They will sparkle para silang mga jewels. Nagi, hindi na lang sila baliwala. Hindi na lang wala ng identity. But rather, sila ay magiging ma- mahalaga na, na, na bansa. The promise reveals the great value of the Lord in the people. Gaano kalaga? They will be a blessing. At sila ay pagmamalaki. Sila ay nasa corona. At sila ay makikita ng ibang bansa. How attractive and beautiful they will be. Grain will make the young men thrive and new wine the young women. Yeah? Napaka, napakalulusog nila, matitipuno, maganda ang kanilang panumuhay. Grain, merong pagkain. Kaya sila malulusog, mangyari, maganda ang kanilang mga, mga produce. At sila ay masarap ang buhay. My grain, a blessing that will bring life and health. That represents the, the needs. Grain and wine, it is a picture of prosperity. Yung, the quality of life. It's here, the quality of life is very, very high, very, very good. Conclusion. Play money before versus real money. Imagine a father playing a board game. Yan. Eh, ito. Naglalaro yung tatay at saka yung anak. Play money. Buying, natututo yung bata, buying selling, pero gumagamit lang sila ng play money, board game. And then the father said, someday I'm going to give you thousands of dollars. Yan. Pero at this time, hindi pa naintindihan ng bata yun. Na akala niya play money pa rin. He does not realize that his father is referring to real money. Now, the father doesn't make the distinction at this time. But, pag lumaki siya, bibigay sa kanya. Then, he will appreciate. The son is focused on the apparent value of plain money. So, it would seem with today's text, God is intent of bringing eternal life to those created. Yun yung real money. The real, the real uh, thing for believers is to have life in eternity. Life here on earth is temporary. Parang play money. He made promise to those under the old covenant in terms of physical earthly deliverance. Yan. Parang ganun. Yung mga inter, intermediate interval nung mga nangyayari, nung nakaraan, doon sa mga uh, ancient Israel, hindi pa yan ang tunay. Because that was their frame reference. Even into the New Testament era, people had hard time seeing beyond the temporary to the eternal. Dapat matuto tayo makita ano ba ang temporary, ang physical. Itong ating kalagayan, this is temporary. Eternal, it is the, the life either in heaven or in hell that will be eternal. Where are you in that regard? Nakakasiguro ka daw ba na ikaw ay dun sa langit o baka ikaw ay sa impyerno? Jesus' kingdom is superior to any alternative now and forever. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for telling us that the real life will be after this life here on earth and that the life here on earth whatever is is going to be temporary what is eternal is whether we will be with you in heaven or we will be in hell Lord we pray that we will be able to learn and to be faithful to you all throughout so that we will also inherit the promise, the kingdom of heaven. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The last slide is the lesson for next Sunday. The kingdom has come upon you. And this will be the start of the Unit 2. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kay ng Diyos. Mga kapatid sa pananampalataya, nais ko kayong imbitahan na makinig, sumubaybay at seryosohin ang ating Bea Sunday School every 9.30 in the morning sa ating Bea Facebook page at YouTube channel. Mahalaga na mapakinggan ang mga napapanahong lessons na iatid sa inyo ni Dean Ramsey, Colorado, ang ating Bea Sunday School teacher. Si Dean Ramsey ay isang dating professor at dean ng University of Cordilleras. Siya ay Sunday School teacher ng Baguio City First UMC sa maraming taon na. Gamit natin ang NIV Standard Lesson Commentary na gawa sa Amerika pero inilalagay sa tamang konteksto ng ating Sunday School teacher. Pinag-aaralan ng mga Kristiyanong theologians at dumaan sa masusing paghahanda. Libre naming ibabahagi sa inyo ang mga lessons. Maaari ninyong i-download at gamitin sa inyong mga lokal na simbahan para pag-aralan at ibahagi rin sa iba. Sama-sama tayong mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos para sa kanyang kapurihan at ikakalwalhati. Pagpalain po kayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Yesus.